In the first video, I showed how I used just 2mm aircraft plywood and softwood batten to build the two sections for each float of the micro catamaran. I used glass reinforced resin to strengthen up the joints, but in fact made an error by using polyester resin instead of epoxy resin. So this second video shows how I've compensated for that error and how I've completed the hull sections, stiffening them up, bolting them together, waterproofing the floats and making two temporary cross beams to test the craft on the water. Now these short videos demonstrate my approach to designing and making in wood which is a combination of forward planning and doing it as I go along. I'm hoping to make available a full-length DVD of the project for sale on my website and there will of course be a few improvements but I'm confident that this prototype will be over 90% successful. All along Lightness, strength and compactness have been uppermost in my mind and so far so good. Now the next thing I did following on from part one was to reinforce the hull section junctions anticipating the likely loads when the craft is on the water. First I drilled for a central bolt using short lengths of studding and then I assembled the two floats carefully ensuring the surfaces were flush and then I drilled a lower second bolt hole. This is because of the likely shear forces and you can see how I diagonally brace the structure to add strength where I thought it was needed. One of the most time consuming tasks so far has been in getting the float sections to align so that they are straight and flush as each float has been fabricated separately. The slight gaps were filled with chemical metal pasted on one float and with masking tape on the opposite float uh, to stop the two floats sticking together. A chemical metal is both very hard and quick setting and easy to apply. I couldn't see a quicker way other than making the floats in one length and then separating them but the plywood sheet was not long enough to make this look neat. Now the sealing of the hulls was straightforward using a coat of epoxy resin Later I'll probably add a paint finish or follow-up coats of yacht varnish. I haven't decided yet. And I've got a few ideas of how to add decking to make the floats watertight and also offering storage. So this will be a major f practical and visual feature. Now, during the building of the floats, my neighbour Roger called by. By chance he's an ex-naval engineer, so he was keen to offer advice. If you know certain things, you start seeing the link between them all. Mm. For example, if you know the wattage of your motor, you can equate it to a horsepower. Yes, of course. There is a relationship. 746 watts is one horsepower. Then, if you multiply the amps by the volts, you get watts. So between the two of them you can uh, find out the horsepower and then there are things like one horsepower is 550 foot pounds yeah, per second. Yeah, I've already worked, I've already calculated that, I've been over to mm. Bristol to a Bristol boatyard yeah. and mm. have, they've given me an indication of what size motor I need that's, and, and yeah. what amperage battery, yes. so that's all I actually need to know. Because you know. once you know the amperage of the battery yeah. and the volts yeah. and the amperage of the battery, you know how that's how right. many hours it will run yeah. for, and then you'll find out... But it's guesswork, because I don't know what the draft will be on this, I don't know what the total weight well, will be. you can work it out, see, this is... Yeah, but it beauty. takes too long, Roger. Mm. I want to just get the boat on the, on the yeah, water. Yes, it takes yeah. too long. Mm. <laughs> well, of course, Roger was wanting to share his specialist knowledge, whilst the fact is, I'm an impatient woodworker who has a different approach to an engineer. I just have my own way of doing things based on accumulated experience. I mean there are a lot of things to get right on this project that would be impossible to work out exactly beforehand. A good example is the work ahead of me in building the centre platform. It has to fit into my car and the space in the car is irregular 
So what I'm doing is a lot of guesswork or mental juggling. I also need to leave room for my dog in the car for when we go boating. Now, by placing the floats in the car and seeing where I can fit the motor and batteries, I can then see how much space and what kind of space is left, which will dictate how I design the really exciting bit, the centre platform. I want to introduce a few curves, but these straight bar members are sufficient for the initial test float. I'll then focus on the really difficult task ahead of designing a lightweight, minimal platform that gives this catamaran a visual wow factor. Well, we've had a bit of a mishap, Gary. Um, well, what can I say? So here is Gary Billhouse, who's um, a champion boat owner himself. So what do you think the chances are of a float today, Gary? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I've got no cash. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's his first floating experience. That's brilliant, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Fair play. Yep, I made one mistake. I didn't put a pencil mark to align where this screw goes. And so that will take me time locating it. And it just shows how important method is. James Bond. I don't know what to do. Pick it up. I can't lift the bugger. <laughs> Why? I've got to do it this way. Yeah. And then I think I've got to... Lift it up. Yeah. In the middle. Yeah. Right. How about... That's it. About there, yeah? Yeah. That should be okay, shouldn't it? Yeah. Ah, moment of truth. Who dares wins? As Del Trotter says. There is, there is a leak. I can't believe it. Let's have a look. On the joints. Well, I cannot believe it, but I do actually have a leak on the join. Look at that. Right. I've got a steering wheel here. Put my pallet on top. We're going to have it with a seagull. Scared the shit out of myself. It's only like that can strip It's good actually. I thought it was quite big when it was in my workshop. Now I feel it's quite small. I used to be a gymnast in my youth. <laughs> Firma terra cotta though. It's not that much water in there. No, not really. Come on, squirrel. There's, come on, come on. Good boy, come on. Lift her up. Yeah. Squirrel. Hey, squirrel. Baby, hey. Squirrel. Yes, oh, squirrel. You'll be okay, baby. You'll be all right. <laughs> he will love it, I guarantee it. Right, so that's a little bit more comfortable with the motor to one side. Right, now I'm going to do the canal speed uh, record. record. It should do seven knots. So now this is speed number two, and I probably have a range of 20 miles of, uh, with two of these batteries, 10, 10 miles on this battery. Right, I'm full speed now. And it's amazing how you don't need a rudder, you use the motor as a rudder. Yeah. Is it pitched down at the front or? No. Is it? Is it? At the back it's down but not the front. Whoa. Pretty good, isn't it?
as you can see, I've built this uh, amazing little boat. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. Very good. Um, it should listen to me a bit more about filling up the inside with water to make sure it don't leak outside. But yeah, it's great. It manoeuvres very quickly and it's very silent and smooth. And it's a, a quite a nice design. For a first boat, uh, it's very good. Well, my first boat was a canoe and my second actually was helped build a, a flagship for the America's Cup in Australia in 1986. Oh, right. oh, so but it was a bit bigger than this. Yeah. But you're right, I don't listen to anybody because that way I can just get on and do my thing and watch you sink. And watch me sink. <laughs> it's good because it's lightweight and portable. And you know, if you if for something for leisure and a hobby, I think it's brilliant. And to put in a small car, well, it's amazing. Anyway, I can't wait to see the next stage. Mm -hmm.